It's January 2024, and this week Etsy announced a significant change with their API that shares data with external applications, including services that a lot of Etsy sellers use to manage email subscriptions, such as Aweber, Allura Email, and Everbee Email. Etsy will no longer be sharing customer email addresses through the API starting on February 5th, 2024. Let's talk about the impact of this and what you can still do with email marketing for your Etsy business. Okay, before we get into more details, let's just level set on exactly what Etsy announced and why they're making this change. Etsy posted an article to the Seller Forum on January 4th, 2024, titled, We're Making a Few Updates to Protect Users' Privacy. The last section of the post talks about an update to the Etsy Public API, which is what third-party services use to obtain information from Etsy. The article specifically says this, we're limiting the buyer info some integrations can access using our public API. Many companies use the Etsy API to build tools and services for Etsy sellers. We call these integrations. To help protect shoppers' privacy, we're putting some additional limits on the buyer info we share with these third parties. We've reviewed this info carefully to ensure we limit the impact on the tools you depend on to run your business. Any sellers impacted by this change will receive an email from Etsy this week about the changes we're making. Now, I did personally receive an email from Etsy one day later, and it provided a little more insight into why they're making this change and the specific impact. The email reads, We're committed to keeping the Etsy marketplace safe and protecting the privacy of all the people who shop and sell on Etsy. That's why we're going to stop sharing buyers' email addresses with certain third-party integrations on February 5th. We're giving you a heads up about this change because it looks like you've used one of these third-party services in the last 60 days. It lists Aweber, Everbee, Sales Samurai, E-Rank, and Allura. Some third-party integrations collect buyer email addresses, which can create a confusing and potentially unsafe experience for buyers who receive emails from unfamiliar or unexpected senders. To help protect buyers and sellers, we recommend all communication happen through Etsy messages. This also makes it easier for our support teams to help you if there's ever an issue. Let's focus on the main headline first. Etsy will stop sharing buyer email addresses through the API on February 5th, 2024. This means any third-party service that was collecting customer emails will no longer be able to get that information. For a service like Aweber, which uses the Etsy integration to collect customer email addresses for your email subscriber list, this is a big deal. Aweber's whole deal, the whole reason Aweber exists is email marketing. So that's a pretty big blow to not have an automated means for collecting customer email addresses anymore. It also impacts the new email marketing services that have been introduced by Etsy seller tool services like Everbee and Allura, and they were named in that email because I have used both. Those Etsy seller tools have fairly recently added email services similar to Aweber, but with a more streamlined and simplified feel. These sites offer a lot more features than just email automation, though. That includes keyword research and competitor analysis, listing analysis, so it's only the email feature that's impacted by this change. But still, it hurts the efficiency of that email feature. So why is Etsy doing this? Well, they stated it a little more plainly in the email that I received compared to the article. They really are trying to keep all communication between sellers and customers in the Etsy messages ecosystem rather than in emails outside of Etsy. When one of those email services like Everbee Email sends a customer a shipping confirmation or a request to review a product after they've received it, the customer can reply to those emails and actually kind of start a conversation with you outside of Etsy messages. And Etsy would rather that those things take place on platform. And I would assume they kind of are especially considering customer service related conversations here, because if you think about it, a customer could reply to one of those emails that you've sent and tell you that they have a problem with their order. And Etsy would want to know about that and have that documented on their platform in Etsy messages rather than somewhere else. So what does this all mean if you use a third-party service with an Etsy integration for email marketing? First, just to be clear, the Etsy API will still be sharing information with third-party services like Everbee and Allura, but also Sales Samurai and E-Rank, which do keywords research, and they just won't be receiving the email addresses of your customers from each order. Their other features like keyword research and listing analysis are still gonna utilize information from the Etsy API, and that is not impacted by this change. And the services they offer for email campaign management, those will still work. They just won't be able to collect new email addresses automatically. So basically this boils down to kind of taking a step backwards in terms of 
email subscriber lists and email marketing for your Etsy business because we no longer can have an automated means for collecting our customers' emails and getting them subscribed to our, our email campaigns. But it doesn't mean we can't still do that. So what can you do to continue building your email subscriber list for email marketing? By the way, quick level set, why is that still important? Why do you still wanna do that? Well, because if you ever take your business off of Etsy and say onto your own website, you start your own site, maybe Shopify or something, and you sell your products off of Etsy, you own your email subscriber list and you can continue emailing those past customers to let them know that now you have your own website with your own store, so you don't have to start 100% from scratch. So, okay, it's up to you now to keep adding new email addresses to your email subscriber list. Now, there are several ways to keep building your email subscriber list. We're not gonna get super technical in this video, but we're gonna hop over to the computer now and talk about a few basic ideas for how you can keep collecting new emails to add to your subscriber list. All right, before we talk about ways you can continue to add new subscribers to your email subscriber list, let's just take a second and think about what you shouldn't be doing. And they actually mentioned it in a reply on Etsy's forum post here. So I will link to this forum post in the description and they have a reply with some questions answered in it as well. And I wanna just focus in on something in the third question here to point out what you shouldn't be doing. So as they point out here, you may not add customers' emails to your email or physical mailing list without their consent. That means you should never copy email addresses from your Etsy orders and add them to your email list. This is against Etsy's policies, and it could also be against the law, depending on laws in your jurisdiction. So it's important to remember, you know, a solution to this loss of automation is not to just copy a customer's email address from the order and paste it over into your subscriber list. They have to actually opt in to receive emails from you. So that is what you shouldn't be doing to add new subscribers. Let's talk about how you can. Now, they also mentioned a few of those things in this uh, in this question reply here as well. So things like social media and getting people to sign up on your blog, if you have a separate website, all that kind of stuff. But what we're gonna talk about are a couple of ways to get people to your landing page for subscribing. Now, all email services that I'm aware of offer you a very simple, basic landing page or the ability to build one. A landing page looks something like this. So this is a landing page for signing up for the email list for POD Insights Etsy shop. So it's very basic. It's got its own web address here. You come to it. It's got one field on it. It allows you to enter your email address here and click subscribe. And now that person's email address will be on your subscriber list. There's two primary ways to get people to this page, same as any other web page. One is clicking on a hyperlink, the other is giving them the URL so that they can manually type it in and go there if you can't give them a hyperlink. However, if the URL is lengthy and confusing, hard to remember, then people aren't gonna come to your landing page here to sign up for your email list. Now, for example, this landing page is from my Allura email account. You can see in the URL bar across the top, that is the URL for this page. Not something people are gonna remember. If I don't have a custom URL that's a lot shorter than this, I'm gonna have to rely on putting this places where people can actually click on it as a hyperlink. So this would include things like putting it in your social media profiles. You can even put this in your Etsy shop about section as a hyperlink. Now, before I go any further, let me just point out for the three services that I mentioned in this video, where to get your URL for your landing page and where you go to actually change the settings. So if you use Aweber, on Aweber, you would log into your Aweber account, of course, and then in the left navigation, you would go to Pages and Forms. And if you go to the Landing Pages section, you will see if you currently have a landing page, you can go and edit that landing page, but the URL is right here for you to copy. If you need to edit it or change it or create a new one, you can do that from your account here on Aweber. And then the URL will be listed right below the name of the landing page. So that's where you can get that URL to use. If you use Allura for Etsy keyword research and their email marketing services, you will go on the left navigation to the marketing tab and then click on email. Once you get to the email section, you will go to the subscriber tab at the top and your subscribe page URL is right here. So you can preview it or you can just click on it to copy it. You can also edit the settings very easily here 
on your subscribers page for this landing page. You can change the heading, the text, the colors, and it will automatically pull the uh, shop logo from your Etsy shop that you have. So very simple and straightforward to edit your subscriber landing page in uh, the Allura dashboard. And then if you use Everbee email, you will go to your Everbee Chrome extension while you are on an Etsy webpage. And in the left navigation, you click on Everbee email that will pop open the dashboard for your Everbee email account. And again, you wanna go to subscribers in the menu across the top. On that page, you can click on view subscribe page. That will give you this little pop-up where again, you can edit the heading and the text and the color theme. And then right here in the top right corner of that pop-up, you have your link to your subscriber page. You can click on it to see a sample of it and then the URL, you can copy it right from there. So in all cases, the URL that you're gonna get for your subscribe page or your landing page is pretty lengthy and kind of confusing and nobody's gonna remember that. And as I said earlier, that can be okay if you're only really sharing this in places where this can be a hyperlink that people can click on so they don't have to remember it. So for example, if we were sharing our link to subscribe to our email list on a blog, if you have a website, that could be a very simple hyperlink. If you're sharing it as a link in your social media accounts, that's a hyperlink, then that can work as well. And then in your Etsy shop settings, you can also put it in your about section. If you go to the left nav under sales channels there, you'll see the name of your Etsy shop. Click on the pencil icon there to edit the shop homepage. Scroll all the way to the bottom until you find the about section and you will find the ability here where it says around the web to add links to your website and social media. You can actually just select website there and then you can paste in your uh, email signup page click save on that. And then when somebody comes to your shop homepage, and then if they actually scroll down to the bottom of your shop's homepage, you will have a link here that says shop website. Now it's not ideal because it doesn't say email sign up or anything, but that's not an option that you have in those Etsy shop settings there. So it's just one more place that you can put it. But what I would not want to do with a URL like that, for example, if we come back down to Etsy and we go to our shop settings in the left nav, and then we click on info and appearance here. Another place you could you know, encourage people to sign up for your email list would be in the message to buyers that is located in your uh, order confirmation emails. So on this page, it's the first tab, info and appearance. If you scroll down to message to buyers, I actually had an old message in here about the fourth quarter and uh, order shipping delays for international orders. I could customize this message to buyers in here and say, you know, sign up for our email list. So for example, I could just put in here, sign up for our email list to receive info on new designs and special offers. However, this is not gonna be a hyperlink. I can put this URL in there, but the customer would have to copy and paste this into their browser in order to go there. And so this is a long, ugly URL. If you don't have a custom URL for your landing page, these types of things are not the best use for them. It would be the same thing for putting it directly on a social media post, like on Instagram, where it can't be a hyperlink on an Instagram post. It's not the best idea to use URLs like this because not a lot of people are gonna go to the trouble of copying and pasting it. They're certainly not gonna type this in manually. That being said, you can go ahead and get a custom domain. You can buy a domain to use for your landing page and just have it redirect to the URL that you have from your email service. And then people will actually be more likely to type it in manually or copy and paste it. So for example, I'm just gonna hop over to GoDaddy here. You can use any domain service that you want, but you wanna make something really short, like as short as possible, that makes sense. So for example, I looked up POD mail or pod mail. So really easy to remember. It doesn't have to be an exact 100% match for the whole name of your store or your shop, especially if you've got a long name. And I can get multiple different ones here. For example, I can get podmails.com and it's on GoDaddy. It looks like if I buy three years, the first year is a penny. Looks like after that, it might be $21.99 a year. You can probably find options that are a little bit less expensive than that if you don't go for a .com or something like that. So look for one that's both affordable and very easy to remember. Once you do that, you can set up your domain to redirect 
to your subscribe page. And once I do that, for example, let's say I, I got the podmails.com. So let's say that was the URL that I purchased. I bought that domain name. Now I could come in places like this and I can put that right in here. And it's a lot easier for the customer when they see this message, it can just say, go to podmails.com to sign up. Way easier, much more likely people would remember that. And I can use that URL everywhere, both where it's a clickable URL or hyperlink, but also in places like this, where it's not something that, you know, people are going to be able to click on. You can even put that in your listing descriptions as part of sort of your template that you copy and paste. You can go ahead and as part of your standard template for your listing descriptions, you can put that at the bottom, copy and paste that, and then make that part of, you know, what's in all of your listings. Same exact thing. You know, if you'd like to sign up to receive information on new designs and special offers, go to podmails.com and sign up. Anywhere where you can't put a clickable hyperlink, that's a good place to use a custom domain that's very short and easy to remember. All right, so that's just a couple ideas to get you started around how you can still build your email subscriber list if you're using these email services and you're kind of worried about, you know, being stalled out on collecting new subscribers because of this change with the API. And then you can still keep using the service that you're using to run your campaigns if you like it. Of course, now that there really is no advantage to having an email service that has an Etsy integration. If you want to look outside of what you've been using to kind of more traditional email marketing services, you certainly can because you're the one that has to drive the traffic to, to get people to subscribe to your list. So you can use any email marketing service that you want. You don't only have to, to look at ones that have the Etsy integration because now there's really no advantage to that. But with that, I would still say, personally, I still think there's a bit of an advantage to using the email services from either Allura or Everbee for two reasons. One is they bundle it together with their other Etsy seller tools. So if you if you do use other Etsy seller tools like keyword research, product research, you know, competitor analysis, listing analysis, then continuing to use their email marketing campaign feature still makes sense to me because it's all contained within this one service platform that you use. It's a little bit simpler than going out and using another one. In addition to that, for anybody who's not, you know, an email marketing expert and hasn't, you know, been doing this for a long time, Allure and Everbee both really simplify the process for you. If that appeals to you, I personally think it still makes sense to at least consider those services for managing your email campaign, even though you no longer have the benefit of that integration and the automation that that brings. All right, so that'll do it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you have questions for this. I hope it was helpful for you. Do me a favor and hit that like button if it was helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to the POD Insights channel if you want to see more content like this. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.